So welcome, everyone. Um, as John mentioned, we're a Boston-based architecture firm. And we have um, projects in basically every building type. It ranges from hotels, from multifamily residential, labs, schools, and even some base planning for the Department of Defense. And it's part of our design process and architecture and how we approach buildings is really looking at future technologies and how these impact um, what we design, how the buildings are going to be constructed, and how people will use them Basically, not just when they open, when they're built, but 20 years from now, 30 years from now, how will that experience still be relevant? Um, and in architecture, there's really four major um, kind of technological things that are fundamentally impacting our profession. And for us, those are driverless cars, mobility, shifts in um, how we get around our cities, how we move products within our cities, mass customization, data, the internet of things, and then of course augmented reality, which is what I will focus on here. But just to kind of give you a global overview about what is affecting architecture as a profession and our discipline, because um, really all of these things are interconnected. So parking garages, we have parking in pretty much every um, building that we're designing, and how driverless cars, V2V technology is causing us to rethink how um, garages are used, how they will evolve over time, and even how um, AR will come into play with how we retrieve our cars, how we drive through space in the future. We saw that from the earlier presentations. Um, you know, this is stuff we're designing into our projects now that are going to be basically online in two years. Uh, mass customization, we're seeing this in retail already with how you can basically get a product that's personalized just for you. Medicine is starting to do this with targeted therapies and obviously 3D printing of buildings is a project of ours in downtown Boston right off of Post Office Square. Um, and so we're basically at the point where we are CNC routing and custom fabricating um, smaller components of the building. What you see on the left-hand side of the screen is basically the CNC routed arm that is fabricating the underside of the soffit for um, what will be 40 Water Street and Digitas will be coming into that building. Um, big data, um, we've brought in a data scientist over the last year. Um, this is going to impact architecture in a huge way, you know, how people behave in our buildings, how our buildings perform, you know, we're already um, mapping those both pre and post occupancy, but we need to do a better job of basically how those inform our design and our processes. And then of course, augmented reality. Um, how we design our buildings, how we look at how they are constructed, how they help general contractors construct our buildings, and then of course, how we use AR to communicate our projects, which are incredibly complex, come with a number of um, kind of large data sets and ways that we have to um, kind of describe how people use our buildings um, are all in play. And so what we're looking at and what I'm going to talk about is kind of what we're doing short term, kind of now, and then what we're projecting out for basically 10 years from now and how we might approach buildings. And so you can imagine as you're walking down an airport, wayfinding, signage, all become replaced with AR. How I'm shopping for things now becomes locationalist. I can look at somebody, like their dress, their sweater, and figure out where they bought it from, where I can get a better price from it, and then begin to connect with people in a much more fluid way. Um, and so really, AR for us, the power um, that we see behind it is it's social, right? Um, and right now, even if you only think of AR kit and how you experience AR on your phones, that is a social thing. People can see your screen, you can have a discussion around it, and it's something that we have not um, yet been able to get from the VR experiences um, with our clients. It's a very isolating experience, and no matter how you, um, you know, basically work the meeting, um, it's, it's tough to get our clients who are in real estate development to put the headset on. Um, second is it's portable. Like we want to give our clients a presentation, something that they can take away and experience on their own terms to basically drill into the buildings deeper, drilling into the designs deeper um, before the buildings are constructed. You know, we are such little time now in the course of meetings. Um, we're bombarded with so much information. We need to make that experience portable and something that you can take with you. And then the third is really communicating. Um, how we communicate these complex um, environmental phenomenon, and I'm going to talk about sea level rise and climate change as one example of that, and how we're looking at VR and AR for it. Um, AR allows us to both humanize that experience and to allow 
people to understand that longer change over time. And so if you look at how we typically re represent sea level rise, represent climate change, it's on 2D maps. This is from Climate Ready Boston. You know, great job of the blue representing water, red representing the heat island effect, and then you can layer on a number of different other layers of information with income levels, um, low income, people who are most vulnerable. You know, another way we do this is with Google Maps and we layer over the water. So this is the seaport, downtown Boston, seven and a half feet of um, basically sea level rise that's projected by the end of the century um, if things keep going the way they're going. Um, the site I'll be talking about is basically, if you see the Bank of America Pavilion in the middle, it's basically underwater. And so that's one of our construction sites right now. Um, and how we visualize the design solutions that we're doing for sea level rise in a map like this versus something that's more immersive. And so obviously, you know, these are 2D representations. We can animate them, we can flip through them, we can make them um, more interactive, but they have the limits. And so what we did was we basically um, wanted to test out creating an immersive experience. And we did this in VR first. And so if you think about how these climate change reports are done, um, in the climate change report, it's a single picture. There's a ruler showing the sea level rise. Um, and what we wanted to test out was, could we humanize this with the more immersive experience? How somebody understands the flooding in this area. This is Alewife, which is a section of North Cambridge. Um, you know, basically an inland site, so you don't typically think of it for sea level rise, but it's actually highly susceptible to um, kind of when you get a high amount of rain and precipitation. So we simulated um, kind of two storm surge scenarios, one um, in 2030 and then one in 2070, and how that would feel. And, you know, we went through a few iterations. The first couple tries was clear blue water, looked like a gorgeous kind of waterfront swimming pool. And we realized, okay, we have to throw in some trash, make this actually not so, so happy, so kind of dynamic. Um, but this allows us to, um, and it came out of our work with schools and doing net zero um, kind of VR presentations to students and to community members. And they were able to understand the effects through VR in a much clearer way. And so this is the site that was underwater a couple slides ago. This is our um, site under construction. It'll have a half million square feet of residential hotel on it, um, two 12-story buildings. And we were really, at um, the same time we were building the immersive VR experience, we were looking at how can we make an immersive AR experience using AR kit? And so as the site's under construction, it'll be basically under construction for two years. Can we let the public um, come by, understand the relationship between what building will be built there, um, and then what is going on during the construction process? So we are basically using AR kit, geolocating our Revit model, getting it at a one-to-one -one scale on the site. So wh when you walk by this intersection, you'll be able to see the building in full scale. And then taking it further um, sorry, and looking back at you know, what if we rebuilt those sea level rise scenarios that we had to do for this project four years ago in AR? Um, and what if we replayed that with the same stakeholders that we had to go through to get those approvals? How might their understanding change about flooding? And, you know, what would their reactions be? And so basically the 100-year flood gets it up to about a foot against the um, water line. And then you have the Category 3 um, hurricane storm surge event that we had to design to for 2100 that basically puts it at about seven feet above the street level. And we've designed a series of protections to get into that. Um, and then, of course, you know, a week and a half ago, we have the bomb cyclone that hits Boston. <laughs> and this is a Twitter um, video that was basically how we're all getting our news that day. You know, you're looking at different Twitter feeds, you're looking at the news, you're trying to figure out what areas of the city are flooded. And so we asked ourselves, well, what if you can take this virtual um, kind of series of events that happened and then re-represent them in AR, host them within AR Kit as the app, so that when the building is built, or even when, you know, before a building is even built on the site, you as a real estate developer, future property owner, um, can have an understanding of where the flooding occurred and at what time. So basically Google Maps for kind of flooding. Um, and so, you know, you can imagine after the building's built that you can then go back and understand where the water encroached to on the site. And from that video, the site was kind of in the corner, and it basically got up to the corner of the intersection for the water. Um, 
And so this is a video of that AR kit. We built this in a week. Um, and we were looking at a couple things again. You know, how do you humanize it? There's rain falling. If the sound was up, they've got the sound of rain coming down. Um, we've got this as a tabletop model instead of a one-to-one -one model. Um, interiors are stripped out. And then basically, you can simulate the 100-year flood and the Category 3 storm. Um, and so we realized a few things. One is that you get AR and a model of a building up to a certain scale where it's bigger than you or it's the size of the room and you suddenly feel it. Like it hits you, um, kind of the scale of the sea level rise, the impact on the building and where it actually is. And this is incredibly hard to simulate in a meeting to a series of stakeholders, um, you know, when you have 10 minutes or less to present, right? Um, and so the thing that we're working through and what we've been unable to find and we've looked to a number of third-party companies is how to get our models, which are incredibly heavy. I mean, architects, we probably build the largest file size models ever um, to represent clearly in AR and in VR. And so this one is stripped of the textures, it's stripped of the interiors, and we're in the process of um, optimizing those layers and trying to figure out a process that will allow us to quickly get them back into the model. Um, that's not advancing. So the future. Um, you know, this is where we see kind of the potential of AR. Um, when AR becomes accepted by mass consumers, you're wearing or have that additional layer of um, kind of virtual information around you. Um, you can imagine that all of our buildings become screens, like the typical typologies of hotel, of residential, what that experience is when you interact with the building, that we can begin to um, reimagine what that is, how our buildings communicate to each other. It suddenly basically takes the importance off of what does your building look like to how does your building act, how does your building engage with the virtual environment, and how can buildings begin to be linked together to communicate larger messages, larger kind of scenarios, when you need to. Um, and so we're in the process of going through um, our different project types, imagining what would happen if we began to layer in augmented reality and start to build those experiences. And then those experiences, whether they were, we're building them as part of the design process or whether we're building them after for a client, um, could be hosted. So take residential. We've already pitched clients on augmented corridors. I mean, typically you walk down a multifamily corridor, it's long, it's boring, it's very blank, the owner doesn't want to spend the money in the corridor. You could imagine that's not a big deal. You're augmenting it with your wearable and how you actually get around in the building. Um, your micro unit, you know, there's a number of um, you know, small scale units that are going up in Boston and other cities due to the housing crisis. How might you reimagine what the surface of your unit looks like to expand that space perceptually? And so we put together just a quick little video um, looking at what some of those experiences could be and really looking at it as that merge between um, hospitality. So taking an Airbnb experience, imagining how you would move into the city, what types of information you would want to get. Um, when you come into that unit and how you might begin to merge data with architecture with AI. they could become more connected to the community around them um, and to just pragmatic things of how do I even work the shower or the toilet or can figure out where dishes are located in my unit. So you can imagine that this begins to expand um, you know, how we use spaces and how we actually design these spaces.